He was fearing for my safety. Like, it was excruciating pain. Get it done, this is horrible. Okay, yeah, we're good? Yeah, we're good to go. My name is Lewis Blois. I'm from Aylsham in Norfolk. My name is John, and uh, I'm the pastor here at Soul Church in Norwich. I'm father to Ronnie and to Phoebe, and I'm husband to Becky. Married to Chantel, and I am 40 years old. Can you believe it? Two fantastic kids, Miracle Joy, she is age seven, and Justice Murray, age four. And I'm running seven marathons in seven days. I'm running seven marathons in seven days pretty crazy. Day one is on Marriott's way from Aylsham to the cathedral. We thought it'd be nice to finish at the cathedral. Basically, we set our watches and we just start running. So we'll see where we end up. Day three, two laps plus a bit of Norwich Ring Road. So we're going to see some great sights. Day four is Colney. We're going to be running 40 plus laps of the training field. Starting at Morston, going to Burnham and back again. For day six, and we're going to run into Norwich, do a few laps, and then we're going to end up at Norwich City. So that takes us to day seven. We are starting at the current Soul Church site on Mason Road, and we are running to the new site. We're doing that five times. And then John's preaching a message that night. At the start line, nine o'clock Monday morning. Monday morning, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't sleep that well that night just because I just wanted to get put that training into into reality and it was quite surreal, the start of it, because you're like, this, this is the moment we've been waiting for and it was finally here and I actually felt really tired. The fact that people were there that day, not only cheering us on, cheering themselves and cheering other, other loved ones on was, was brilliant. Since October, I've not run in any heat and suddenly it was 24 degrees out of nowhere and Bang. it was another problem to contend with. Seven and seven actually came off the back of me just, I was in America going for a jog um, on a Monday afternoon and I, I was thinking about the, the new building and the lives it's going to impact and I wanted to do something that was going to catch people's attention. So I thought about running a marathon, I thought well, you know, a lot of people run marathons and you know, that's a great effort to run a marathon, I have done one before, but I wanted to do something that people were going to almost gasp for breath when you tell them what it was. So I just thought, imagine running a week of marathons. Then went home and Googled it and found out you can actually do it if you put enough hours in it. And so, so seven marathons in seven days came about um, from having a, uh, a lunch with John. Um, and he, he shared this vision of running seven marathons in seven days, which sounded great. And 
I'm normally somebody who, um, before deciding to do anything or look into it, will contemplate the, the what it involves. Um, but straight away, for some reason, and I still don't know why, I just said, I'll do it with you. Um, and I, I tried to get out of it um, by saying, you know, I, this is his thing and he should do it. But no, he, he wanted the support. Yeah, announced it to the church. This is what I was going to do. And people started to laugh, literally. And I was laughing as well because I think, how am I going to do this? But, you know, every day it gets a little bit easier and you, you take it a step close to your to dream. So, yeah, I'm still kind of thinking, why did I do it? Um, my body's telling me that, asking that question. But um, no, I, I know the the overall vision of it. Um, and uh, as somebody who attends Soul Church, um, the the vision that is there um, f for for the new building, for the for the the help and the support it will bring to the city, uh, is, is amazing. And you know, my kids are going to grow up in this facility. The dream is free. The journey isn't, and that's been that's been you know the cost involved. But I do know it's going to have a great impact. And you know, by faith, we're going to complete it too. <laughs> the cathedral and yeah great great finish yeah it was fantastic a, a nice little um yeah almost like a terrace of people to, to come into which was which was good it was a it was a weird weird one that because we were one of the last to finish because people were obviously doing their 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 marathon and and going for times and we, we weren't doing that for obvious reasons but <laughs> finished well yes it was tiring I think you know we, we both finished and got over the line and right onto the next one and there was people yeah you know lying lying down and you're thinking we've got like, six to go we've got six yeah. more but to go I did feel at that point I must admit it was a confidence boost that we'd done the training and I must have had five or six people say you don't even look like you've done one and that was nice, yeah, that, was nice. that was a nice feeling and I to a point I didn't feel like I'd done one and that Watching, watching other people's misery, and I've been like that doing one marathon, feeling horrible, but knowing the training had really worked because yeah. I did feel good after that one. It's a massive thing to do a marathon, just one marathon for people. I felt a bit bad over the the, the leading in the leading months in, um, the months leading into it, that people were saying, you know, oh yeah, I'm only doing one. And I'm like, no, you're doing a marathon, which is phenomenal. Um, it's a small percentage of people in this country that have done a marathon. Um, and you know, those guys that did it on that day as well in that heat. I did it. I was living smash, but I did it. <laughs> Just completed day one, 26.2 miles, and I'm actually watching Norwich City on my phone, play Stoke. And yep, yeah, it's been a, I would say, a slightly tougher day than I expected because of the heat and uh, also thinking about all those other amazing runners and lots of conversation. So, yep, yeah, feeling good, getting a good uh, massage from Steve here, and we're going to get ready for day two. Quick uh, little massage, I've had some food, get home, plenty of rest, and back on it tomorrow morning. Day two has arrived, feeling strong, a few little aches and pains, but nothing to worry about. Just had some great porridge, protein shake, and yeah, feeling feeling really good. So day two, just getting a bit of breakfast now, but uh, yeah, getting ready for it. Day one was, was good, it was hot, it was tough, but we're, we're now prepared, and uh, yeah, let's do it, day two. It's nice to come in and almost just have that 
Um, I'm from a football background, have that kind of changing room atmosphere and, and just having a bit of time to prepare. Yeah, we also have communion, which is really special because mm. I think the communion brings it all the way back to why we're doing what we're doing, which is about Jesus and He's already borne our pain and taken our sickness on the cross. And... Day two, day two of 77, feeling strong, feeling God's strength, but also not underestimating what today is going to be like, so taking it easy this morning. We'd never done back-to-back -back marathons, so we were going beyond, beyond we were breaking yeah. um, through the barriers that, that we'd done, and obviously from then on, every Every step we took yeah. was a, was another barrier. Let us how you feeling, mate. Good, 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 good. Come on. And we've got Mr. Bass training. Where is he? There he is. I'm not a runner. I'm not a runner. You're not a runner. We don't enjoy running. We no. weren't built for running. We, we both you can said see that. that, can't you? Some some people enjoy running. We don't. Yeah. Um, I actually secretly yeah. think in a couple of weeks he'll be ringing me going, "Do you want to go for a run?" <laughs> So the coach is Neil Featherby. The guy, I think he's one of the, the most mentally strong people I know. Nothing is impossible. Um, you just gotta work at it. That that's, seems to be his mentality and his experience, his knowledge. When you first mentioned it as a run, he says, well, yeah, of course you can do it. You yeah. just gotta train. If you really want to do it, you're gonna do it. You know, and they had a yen, I understand they're both busy. And, you know, and I know John's all over the place and lives and travels the country with his job, but, Hey, you know, you know, a challenge is a challenge. No awesome challenge should be easy. That's the whole point, you know, it's like anything else in life. And, you know, if you study for a degree, you know, do you want a three year degree or do you want a piece of paper where you sit in a classroom for three hours? You know, obviously it's the work that goes into these things that make it worthwhile. So in other words, you know, it's been a long, hard 10 months, 10 months or so of training. Training um, started off quite low, low intensity, um, but it built up over the, over the last, uh, 45 weeks and the last two or three months have been really intense, really time intense. But yeah, it has taken a, a toll, on not just on our bodies, but on our families. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the, the day this is over. Not because I want it to be over, but because you know you get your life back and you can actually spend some time with your, your loved ones after work rather than your trainers. The two or three mile runs turned into eight to 10 mile runs. And then on the weekend we were doing 20 plus. Um, and that's, that's two or three hours in the week, two or three times, and then it's four, five, six hours on the weekends. And, and it's, yeah, the, the miles, um, the miles are, are okay. Our bodies are used to that, but it, we, we don't get used to the time. <laughs> having, having the time away from family um, doesn't get any easier. The training gets easier, but the time doesn't. You are the way, the truth and the life We live by faith and not by faith <laughs> Hey Lewis, what are we dealing with here? Who let him <laughs> Well, there's no doubt about it, Lewis is physically stronger than me which has been really good On time, gets me out the door and if ever I'm lagging he'll say, come on, we can do it This guy, um, it, his biggest strength, he's just relentless in, in, and that's good and bad but in whatever he does, he is relentless. And if, you know, I've had times where I've just said, I can't do this training today, I can't do it. Uh, he's been on the phone saying, come on, you can, you can. Pain's beginning to kick in on day two, but we're gonna push through. Thanks for all the support, prayers. Appreciate you. One of our favorite things to do in training was run in the city. Cause it's amazing when you're in a city, mm -hmm. you, you, you take your mind off your legs. 
So I loved I loved running through the cathedral or all around that tombland area up to the Cow Road and around the riverside and memories that will hold for a lifetime. I have to admit, I'm struggling a little bit, but it's all good. <laughs> I've got 10 miles to go, so I'm going to make it. Thanks for your support. Just six miles to go today. Seven is seven challenge. Feeling strong. At the end of day two, I just pulled my calf slightly, um, which is a problem I've had for years. Um, it's the first time I thought, Oh, I don't know, Can't, am I going to be able to finish it? So that was hard. Very tough. Started off okay. Sorry, sorry about the noise. That's John getting a massage in the background. <laughs> anyway, back to it. Uh, it started off okay. Started well. We were quite surprised first few miles, but it it, it hit. I don't know, 15 miles in, it hit, and uh, thought Norfolk was flat. <laughs> it's not. It's really not. But uh, we did it. Two down. Five to go. Yeah, I'm actually feeling strong this morning. I had a tough night. I couldn't get to sleep because my body was aching, but I'm feeling refreshed and ready to go. So come on, we can do this, day three. Yeah, feeling good, feeling all right. Just got a few war wounds, um, just um, taping up some blisters and whatnot, but they're yeah, all good, looking forward to today. I think it's great. I mean, Norwich is the is a, sort of the nearest city I, I grew up in. And when we were planning the routes, so the, the thought of, of going around Norwich and circling Norwich um, was, yeah, it was, it was symbolic. To, to this, is, this is why we're doing it. We're doing it for the city of Norwich. This was now a real event we were doing and even by the end of this day we weren't even halfway mm. so this was a <clears throat> mentally hard day. Norwich is great but the ring road, the ring is, road grim. is grim. Yeah. And we knew why we were doing it, it was like significant and we didn't, it was the right thing but it was definitely for me the most tedious, yeah. laborious. Lorry fumes every, every yeah. couple of minutes and yeah, it's Probably. hilly as well, yeah, the ring road is The ring road hilly. is hilly, Yeah. all right? So don't ever Norfolk tell us it's not. not. Yeah. Norfolk is not flat. The world is, but Norfolk's <laughs> not. Yeah, it's priceless to have people in who want to come out and support you. And Jake and Harriet Humphrey came out with their new dog and started blasting out Christ of Own Cornerstone. Yeah. I'm just a little bit more than halfway through day three. And don't they look fresh and ready for another four days after today? <laughs> <laughs>
I think it was the, just the, the fear or concern for me of, you know, it was again six hours of pain coming tomorrow. Yeah. Not necessarily the, the, the body ache or anything yeah, like that. It was just the thought of it. And, you know, with the, the calf issues I'd had, thinking, am I going to be able yeah. to do it tomorrow? And that was more the, I, don't, I didn't struggle with sleep, but what did maybe I suffered with some sort of not being able to sleep is that just that fear of, yeah. am I going to be able to do it? Because at the end of the day, if a muscle snaps, you know, I'm limping around, it, it's not going to work. That, that was what And the fear me. Of, for me was, what happens at day four, I do do something, like what happens to this project? The balance between fear and faith and the reality of what's going on. It was a fear of failure, but I think in a good way. In a good way. It, it kept us on our toes and yeah. It, yeah, we didn't get complacent. So it, that was that was good. John, John, quiet. Bit tired this morning. It was it was tough getting up, but um, yeah, it, yesterday was was tough. A um, few aches and pains this morning. A uh, few little pulled muscles after two miles. I pulled my, pulled my calf, but but carried on through. So, but yeah, starting to feel it now. Definitely starting to feel it. But looking forward to going up to to the football club today. Get the support from those guys. Um, and yeah, should should be a good day. Couple of big milestones coming up today. On day four. Cheers, big Steve. Um, so he's just hit a pressure point. We uh, am I just chilling out? You yeah, chill out, son. <laughs> chill out, son. All right. We're going to hit the halfway mark today, and we're also going to hit the hundred mile mark, which is going to be pretty, pretty amazing. So, feeling good. There's a few little niggles. I've got some back pain. All good. We're going to do this. Day four. Bring it on. I'm in good hands. Literally. Oh, <laughs> I'm already blowing, so I'll take my half time. <laughs> Mr. Jordan Rhodes, supporting the cause, 77. Really appreciate it. How are you feeling, Jordan? I'm very good. I don't know about you, but it's He's incredible doing. effort what John is doing uh, for such a good cause. So. It's, it's a big challenge, but it's um, what's more important is you know the guy, the work that Lewis and, and John do for us and Soul Church in general is um, is amazing, you know. And for us to have the opportunity to give a bit back in terms of you know using our facility, us using a little bit of our ability to you know hit a lot of people in terms of um, in terms of raising awareness, you know, it just gives us a chance to give something back. It's just showing the boys that you know we really appreciate them and we appreciate the work they do. And, and for us, it's a small gesture, but hopefully, if it helps. Uh, raise awareness and uh, you know it's great for everyone. The roles ultimately as a chaplain is is, is their support for, for the players. The the players get everything from physical training, psychological um, help, uh, nutritional help, everything. Um, and spiritual help is something that's that's not there um, all the time. Um, and the, the fact that the club allow us to go in I think it's commendable because not every football club is, is like that, and it's it's ultimately it's there to to to, to be a support mm -hmm. for the players in times of need, in times of success, whatever it whatever it is really. There is people less fortunate than all of us, and you know the work that Soul Church do and have enabled us to help out with them 
it's good for two folk as one from from our side it's an opportunity to help people who, who need help um, but also sometimes for our staff and for our players and our people who, who are within our club it's it's a chance to just be reminded about what you know life can be and, and the challenges that people have you know because sometimes in our world you, you do live in a bubble By day four, I was starting to get a little bit grumpy, I, I will admit that. You become more <laughs> emotional because mm. as your body is breaking down slowly, you're becoming less controlled, you know, what you're saying. And so yeah, I was very, I was very, I was more aware of who I was running mm. with because you want to be with people who can absolutely trust you and trust them. So that was a big thing for me and for Lewis, you know, when you train with someone for a year, you get to know them. We shared stuff about our lives, our past, our futures, our dreams, our marriage, and marriage, kids, and it's, there's a, a huge level of trust there. Because there's yeah. you talk when you're running for six, seven hours. You talk, you get to know someone. If I was struggling, you knew whether to say something, whether to yeah. shut up, and, and vice versa. I yeah. you know, think there's there was. I mean, all through training, there was a little hill on the way home back to yours, wasn't there? Yeah. That it was your nemesis. We called it his nemesis, and. I don't know. I just leave you because yeah. he just need. But he just need, he didn't need someone saying, "Come on, John, you yeah. can do it." He just needed to be in his own headspace. I think at that time, and yeah. once you're up there, you're done. And I think just, I think subconsciously, you just learn how to manage each other. Man, yeah, manage each other. Across the 100 mile mark, across the halfway mark, day four, feeling it, but feeling good. Um, it's absolutely gruelling. I could not have imagined the pain that you feel, but you just got to keep thinking about the lives that are going to be changed through this project, and that keeps you going. So the support, the messages, the donations, just incredible. Yeah, so actually quite humbled by it. Shattered. Absolutely done in, to be honest. It was um, it was nice not having any hills today, but 40 laps of, of the same place is uh, is tough. It was yeah, it was really hard. I don't know. We'll see how good the cryo chamber is. <laughs> so we just we've just been in the cryo chamber, minus 130 degrees or whatever it is, to, to try and help us recover. Which again, the club allowed us to use that, which is phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I just I just hope we can recover, get some get some food, get some sleep. Thursday night was the, the lowest point for me. So we used the cryo chambers um, there. Um, what was it, minus 130, stood there in your boxer shorts and gloves on for three minutes. Whether it was that or whether it was dehydration or not, but I got out of there, got changed. I was then started shivering, really, really shivering. Um, and I thought, this is a bit odd. So got, got a cup of coffee, got in the car, was fine going home. Um, got home, walked from the car to home same feeling, really shivering, got in. Um, and this is probably about nine o'clock by this point. Um, got in and just collapsed on the sofa, shivering but sweating with a fever as well. And at this point I'm thinking, you know, I said the, the fear of am I gonna finish it really did kick in. I just couldn't eat a thing. Um, without being too graphic, I'd already brought up what I'd eaten already. Um, I've just ran a marathon. I am, I'm sweating, really not thinking, I think at that point it didn't just become, it wasn't just a, 
Mm. Lewis, this is a tough run. This is now fearing, she was fearing for my safety at that point. I think for me, I'm in my own headspace and I'm still determined to do it and I'll, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. She quite rightly is now concerned, is there some health issues here? Um, and she's thinking the worst. And um, you know, the, the church and the team, the sort of 77 team and, and the church, the wider church rallied around us, I think with, with um, huge amounts of prayer. Um, and and that really did help to, to feel the comfort and the love of, of the team and the church at that point um, where yeah it was that was it was scary um, I, I think it was dehydration I think that's probably what it was because that day it rained and I just think you didn't you don't drink so much when it's raining but it was, it was a scary place to be um, but fortunately I got a good night's sleep um, and the following morning discovered um, that the best thing for me to eat were McDonald's hash browns. Slept okay, I did wake up about three o'clock in the morning in absolute agony, I'm gonna be honest, but hey, I can be honest on day five, but I'm about to eat the breakfast of a champion, porridge, so yeah, I'm gonna say in faith, I'm feeling strong. Worst I've felt so far, yeah, yesterday, yesterday took it out of me. In, in the run was okay, but um, yeah, last night was, was struggling, whether it's because we were Later in the day, we were on our feet for 12, 13 hours in total, I, I don't know, but yeah, tough. It was, uh, yeah, just want to get out there now and do this one. Yeah. Day five, get it done. Get it. We are going to North Norfolk Coast to run um, some of the strip there. It's going to be great, some sea breeze, run across the cliffs there at Morston, over to Wells and back. So looking forward to it. Got some great friends and uh, strong, strong people running with me today and I'm going to need them. Get today done and then we're, we're in the weekend and the... Uh, the end is in sight. We're doing all this, but there's a purpose behind it, which is to raise resource, raise money for the new church. And so there was the physical side of it, there was the sacrifice of it, but there's also the fact is, are people actually gonna to give to this? <laughs> because if he's given up a week of work, a year of his life, a year of family, I'm the same, definitely had an, it had an effect on my family, the church, the momentum of the church. It definitely had you know, negative effects. It, so there has to be an uplift from this. Now, what happens if people don't give any money? Thank you, everyone. Because at the end of the week, if we turn around, we've raised 15 grand. I would have remortgaged my house and given you 15 grand. And I'm pretty sure he would have given some towards that as well. There has to be a faith element here. And at the start of the week, the money was slowly coming in. And I'm getting nervous. And then someone sent Lewis. 3,000 and you, 3,000. 3,000 each, yeah. plus gift yeah. day, and that was like, mm. this is seven, 8,000, and that was a massive It was, hit. yeah. And then that day, the money really started coming in, and people would, people, I mean, it was, and every time it came in, we'd have a little cheer, and so we'd get an email as we are running around, and... Just reading the paper. Oh, there it is, there we go, everyone. I'm doing the David Brent. <laughs> doing the David Brent. Oh, there we go. <laughs> It was amazing, and the generosity and the sacrifice of people. And it wasn't like one person who gave a load of money. It was thousands of people yeah. who gave sacrificially. And for me, that, that was the mark of this project, is how much people sacrificed. from the ring road. It's a bit nice, though, isn't it? Yeah. It was my favorite, but also my hardest one. Yeah. For me, off the back of how I was the night before. It was tough, and the, yeah, the terrain, it was, I don't know, it was all bobbly. It's then sand at points. It was, it was Jefferson. windy, it was everything, but it was sunny. A bit of sea air was, was good. Church is relentless because church never stops. Um, events come, events go, but church is week in, week out, you know and they always say the next Sunday's just around the corner, it really is, so it's kind of been able to leave the day-to-day -day running of the church with the team, and let me tell you, they did a fantastic job, not just that week, but the weeks before, and even the weeks after, as I was slowly getting my head back into gear. Um, I just had the, the physical bit of running, one foot in front of the other, 
help get him across the line. That was pretty sort of just tunnel vision for me. What what he had to put up with was um, was you know, ridiculous because he's, he's still got the daily running of, of a church and 30, 40 staff and a thousand people and a thousand people's problems and, and that is his job, but he still had to get that in. Okay, day five done. Thanks to everyone. Supporters, Team Messages. Team 7 in 7! Hundred and thirty odd miles done. Exhausted, fatigued. It was sandier than than we thought it was today, so it was like running through treacle at times. But yeah, it was a tough one. The I found the first half harder than the second half. Maybe got into the flow of the second half of it. But yeah, really, really tough. What finished the day off was having some fish and chips at the end. So all the all the dietitians and nutritionists out there will be saying it's the wrong thing, but it was the it was the right thing. Um, when we finished, but no, it was it was great. We had we had a few guys out with us today running, which helped us through. Um, it really does help to to have guys out with us. So um, yeah, appreciative of that. But um, yeah, very tired. <laughs> Yes, we can. It's been a really tough morning, and um, getting out of bed today was the hardest thing I've done in a long time. And I'm absolutely battered, but I'm not broken, which is the main thing. My body's getting weaker, but my mind's getting stronger. Hopefully the promotion party tonight at Cow Road with Norwich City, and they're going to be uh, presenting us as community heroes, which is going to be a phenomenal honour. So really are grateful for that to everyone at the club. So looking forward to uh, probably the latter part of the day rather than the former. My tolerance levels are so low. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> yeah, really feeling it. I, I didn't want to get up this morning, being brutally honest. It's raining. Yeah, it's, it'll be better for running, but it's wet. Um, but yeah, well, I don't know. I'm lost for words at the minute, but it's really tough. Really, really tough. We are the community heroes tonight at the club, which is great, absolutely fantastic. You're the hero of the Shut up. Um, <laughs> so we're the community heroes, <laughs> so I've got no filter at the moment. Um, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Mm. 
was a rainy, miserable day. It was a drizzly British day. I woke up that morning and I found it incredibly hard to get out of bed. I got to the top of the stairs and Chantal, my wife, helped me along with the banisters get down the stairs. And I remember she used to help me down. I said to her, I actually got to run a marathon today. I can't <laughs> even walk down the stairs. Yeah. And, you know... <laughs> And it, the, the disbelief in her fate. It's like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And every day when we run a marathon, it took, like you were saying the day before, seven or eight miles took you to get into it. Do you know, it took me a half marathon <laughs> no, no. before I got my legs to go, okay, this is what we're doing today. Um, and the pain, I mean, the, you, just, you can't even describe it. And when people say, how does it feel? There's no context that you can compare it to. The only way I can say it, I was, I wasn't tired, but I was just constantly exhausted. Yeah. In that we were never out of breath. We were never no. like it's never the feeling of you've done a load of sprinting and you've got yeah, that yeah. lactic acid building. You're never like that, but just constantly on on zero or near zero. Not a lot in the tank and just constantly having to refill with drinks and food and burn that and then a bit more. And it was, yeah, it was it was starting to bite and by you, this. You're piling yeah. so much sugar <clears throat> into your body to try and get a reaction. Mm. Lucasay and the fruit pastels. Yes, we, we did another kind of free run around the city and, yeah. and in areas. Um, but the the fact that we were going to Carrow Road in the evening. Kept it going. And you know, the club, again, getting involved with it. And, and we were presented as the community heroes um, for that game, which happened to be the game that Norwich secured promotion as well, which... Yeah, I, yeah. I'm seizing. My, my legs are seizing up. I've never felt pain like it. It's excruciating. But we're going to get through it. If we can do this now, there's no, no reason we can't just One finish more it off tomorrow. One more day. This guy's One done more incredible. Day. This is horrible. Get it done. One more day. But my mind is still strong. And that's Come all we need. Come on! Come on! Come on. Come on. Come on. And we didn't get to bed till probably yeah, 11, midnight, midnight something midnight. like that. Um, because it was an evening game, getting out of Carrow Road, getting home, etc. So again, for me that night is, oh, have I had enough sleep? Have, am I gonna be able to do it? I think, to be honest, we'd have just dragged, we'd have crawled the next day, because it's just the last day. It's pretty surreal to get to the final day and um, it's gone actually quite quick. I know it's been a long week, but it's actually gone quite quick. And I'm just so grateful that our bodies are injury free. That's the biggest thing that I'm thankful for today because we'll push past the pain. My mind is still strong. So we're gonna get, we're gonna get through it and can't wait to get past that finishing line. I don't know what it is, whether it's Norwich getting promotion last night or what, but yeah, I feel a lot better this morning. Yeah. Um, just, it's the last one. Yeah, yeah get through it today. Someone said, just one to go. I walked a few steps past that person and then, and then just sort of stopped and thought, yeah, just one to go, but we've got a marathon to go. It's like, it, it, we'd, we'd belittled yeah. one marathon by doing this. And I thought, no, it's still a marathon. If I was going out to do one marathon, it would be massive. And it was just the it's almost blase nature that this person said and that I felt myself.
for me, I, I just keep thinking of the big picture and that keeps me going, that kept me going. Even though every time we ran up and down to the site five times, there was nothing there. But it's what will be there. And I kept imagining and dreaming of the day that we pull in. And, mm. you know, for, so, so the journey of seven and seven won't stop because you know, we will look at this project in years to come and go, we played a integral part in this. Yeah. So that, that kept me going, changed lives, kept me going. I was kind of pacing myself that day because I knew I had to run a marathon, but I also realized I had to speak for 30 minutes on a stage in front of seven, 800 people. And that on a Sunday is a big thing on its own. about halfway through that day when we, when we stopped yeah. for some lunch up we stopped at, for some at lunch the heart season I broke down I yeah. started crying because I just <clears throat> I don't know there's a reason I was crying there's a reason I was just didn't, wasn't in control of my emotions mm -hmm. and I remember we just I remember just praying just like crying out to God saying God just give us the strength because I don't have any strength left it gave us the strength to go on and people really rallied that day people were joining us weren't they yeah. again it wasn't a pretty run back on the ring road five laps up and down the heart sees, but I think again, spiritually significant. Yeah. I don't know if I'd do it again, knowing all the sacrifice, but to a point, that's probably the only way I end up doing something like that, is just do it, become, be accountable for it, and then there's no way, there's no escaping it. Um, I think anybody can do a challenge like that, if you put the training in. Mm -hmm. um, we put 10, 12 months training in, and, and it's doable, but um, big sacrifice, but ultimately, if you want to do something like that, just go on with it and do it. What got me through all the training is it was coming the vision of coming around that bend kids like did keep me going through all the winter training and everything just when it's finished that feeling will be amazing and i didn't know what to expect it was nathan who stopped us just before we went around a project manager and just said hey just before you go around here just breathe it in because this is you know this will never happen again in your life what you're about to experience yeah. when we got around that corner i can still picture it now and yeah it was just Unbelievable, we didn't even know where to run, there was that many people um, there and um, yeah, it's a feeling I'll, I'll never forget, it was relief. came around that corner, I knew it was going to be big, but when I went around and saw, I don't know, probably nearly a thousand people waiting for us, just lined the streets. And that moment I'll never forget, we ran down that finish line. Ten or twelve months of, of graph. seven marathons in seven days. I've just been sitting upstairs and calculating if I'm doing 10K in one game, it takes me 28 games to reach what you've reached in seven days. 
So imagine playing 28 games in a week. That's what an achievement. Um, I think we've achieved something yesterday, but what you've done is simply outstanding. And it's uh, it's uh, it's another top on on that great week that we've all had here in Norwich. Well, I don't know where to start, but first and foremost, I want to thank my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ because we're at Him. We could not have done this, and. He gave us strength in some of the darkest times I've ever experienced in my life, but he gave us the strength to get through. Have I got to say something? I won't say much other than... special moment to speak that night. That was a, definitely one of the highlights of 7 and 7 was being able to share those seven lessons from those seven marathons. I definitely felt a sense of God was holding me that night. It was like there was an, another person standing beside me on the stage and helped me because in my own strength I couldn't have done that. A few times in my life that I felt like he gave me every single word that night and those words were just Put together and I was literally it was in his strength not mine yeah it's um it's yeah it's pretty amazing yeah. really I feel quite proud one of my lessons from seven and seven was the dream is free but the journey isn't and it's easy to dream about anything in life but there's a cost to the journey and so dream big and then weigh up the costs plan the costs and like Lewis said just do it and you won't regret it so well done mate well done mate we did it. <laughs> yeah. It was a good 10 months, wasn't it? <laughs> and a good week. That's it for me, Alfred. <laughs> 